Hi guys, welcome back to John's Workshop. This is episode 13. They're coming thick and fast, um, but I think this will be sort of the end of uh, the, the end of the sort of regular videos, and probably go back to kind of one a week after this. Um, I've just had a bit of time off last week, which has uh, enabled me to get a bit more done quickly. So, uh, but uh, I think we'll probably frequency is going to drop a little bit now. Um, but anyway, a um, few bits. Um, not a lot changed since last night, other than um, I finished off the, the, the collets in the ultrasonic tank, so they've all been through there now. The first batch um, have all had the, the treatment that I showed last night, where they've all had um, Scotch Bright and oil, you know, and they're, 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 looking, they're looking okay. Um, there's one or two of them, and I don't think my camera will pick it up particularly well, but there's one or two of them. I don't know whether that shows or not, but there's there's some fretting around the front of that one where there's obviously been a cutter that's broken during use, but I've got another one that size, <coughs> excuse me, so, um, and then the, the rest of them, I've been back through this morning, um, through the thing, and they've had a bath of oil, so they're just sitting there now in oil waiting for, waiting for the Scotch Bright treatment, so that's that. The other change is I've also, while I have the Scotch Bright out and the oil, um, I've uh, done a bit of work to the Eclipse uh, DTI stand, so that's all been completely stripped. Um, and it, it didn't need a lot of work, it was in fairly good condition, but I've stripped it all down. Scotch Bright and oil over everything, just cleaned it all up, and it's now, you know, it's now sat nicely on the surface, surface plate, ready for, uh, ready for action. It does need a bit of work. Um, where this rod fits into the base it's quite it's quite loose um, so I'm not really sure how that was originally designed in there there's nothing that holds it in it just sits in there so a couple of options there really one is drill and tap a tiny hole in the front put a flat on the on the bar and just a tiny grub screw in there just to nip that in place because obviously this needs to be rigid there's no it's no good as it is while it's rocking about um, second option is to turn that bend section off completely um, that's slightly undersized and then turn another diameter on there that's a much tighter fit, almost a press fit but then obviously that means you can't take the thing apart so I think the grub screw idea is probably better but I'll, I'll take feedback and advice from people and there's no rush on that so but it's there uh, waiting to go. What I can do in the short term, if I want to use it or need to use it, I'll probably just wrap a turn of PTFE tape or something around the bottom and just um, fix it in there, and that will just help um, for the for the short term. But so that's um, that's that. Um, what we're going to do now is get on with the um, the bandsaw um, modification that I took you through yesterday. Um, we'll just zoom back out. So I'll get on with the bandsaw mod. So we're going to take the um, the, the vice uh, post that I showed yesterday, we're going to put it up in the lathe, we're going to try and part that off. I have found a parting off tool, it's a grooving tool really, it's not a proper parting off tool but it's a, an inserted one. So we'll get that set up on centre height, <coughs> get this in the chuck and um, we'll have a go at parting this off. I have run a file over this quick, it, I, I was concerned it was hardened or case hardened but it seems to be reasonably soft so I think it'll uh, I think it'll um, it'll turn all right but as I've said before my lathe doesn't part off particularly well the 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 um, area under the, the tool post isn't flat so the tool post is all you know it, it's not solid um, so there's a bit of work required on that um, one of the projects that as soon as I get a mill I am going to do is create a rear parting off tool post at the back um, they're much better than parting off in, at the front um, for many reasons, but but yeah, not not only the fact you, you don't have to keep changing the tools at the front, you can always have it sat at the back if you've got room. But secondly, and I'll do a bit of a, a whiteboard demonstration of this with a rear parting off tool. Um, it, you know, the whole lathe works on the principle of gravity holding the saddle down on the on the bed. If you've got a rear parting off tool, what it's actually doing is, is lifting against gravity. So if you, uh, if the tool wants to start digging in, what it actually does is lifts the tool above the centre height and, and it stops that digging happening. Whereas if you're using a front parting off tool, 
it doesn't have that lift and what it will then do is dive in underneath the part and, and try and lift the part over the top of the tool and that obviously creates some of the issues that you have on parting off so I'll do a bit more of a sketch around that um, but that, that will be when I get the milling machine because I need to mill the, the block of steel and mill the slot in for the parting off tool but that's a future project. So we'll get this loaded up in the lathe and we'll, uh, we'll have a go at parting this off um, with this little grooving tool and see how we get on. So we're here at the lathe guys ready for the, the bandsaw mod. Uh, apologies I can't fit everything in on the camera, um, it's just it's zoomed out as far as it will go. Um, so um, I surely don't want to look at my uh, head and shoulders anyway, it's, this, is the, this is the interesting bit. So this is, the, this is why I went for the roll cab idea, so I've got the lathe here and I've wheeled this out so I've got everything on hand, you know, right where I need it. So the first thing I want to do is measure the length of the thread that's sticking out and just put another mark on the bar um, to account for that thread because obviously I need to I need to account for that. So that mark was the where I want the, the sort of end of the steel piece to go, but then I need the, the, the plastic end piece um, on the end. So we'll just measure that up now. So if we go for 15, because it's not been cut off particularly well, we'll go for 15 mil. So we'll put that in the lathe, and I'll just put another mark, 15 millimetres, away from the original mark that I made. I'll spin you guys around in a minute. Now is I'll spin the camera around and we'll face it the other way so you can see what's going on in the lathe. So this is the tool that I found last night as I was going through my um, various tools on packing boxes. So it's a, it's it's really a, a it's a grooving tool um, with a very small insert on with a with a flat end on it, but that'll be fine for parting off this uh, this small bar I think. But we'll give it a shot. Like I said, my tool post, the, the, the surface underneath the cast surface of the compound slide isn't flat. So this, you know, parting off is, is always a bit dodgy on this lathe. It just doesn't seem to work particularly well, but we'll we'll give it a shot. Worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, we'll whack it in the bandsaw and cut it off that way. So we just need to get this set up on centre height. I'll just get my... Um, Safety glasses because I'm on my last pair of eyes. That's, that's miles above centre height at the minute. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not a good development. I'll fix that later. What we'll do is we'll set it without the without the um, quick release stop height stop in place. It won't matter for this. Let's we'll see how that's running. Hmm, it's not running very well, is it? Let's just reach up that. Let's have a slight bend in it, maybe. Of it, but that'll be fine for what we're doing. Um, so, um, what we'll do now, just a quick tip for centre height setting, and most of you will know this already, but some of you might be beginners. A quick way of telling centre height with any tool if you just use a, a rule and just gently bring your tool in until it 
just lightly grips them. Roll, maybe a bit stronger than that. Probably with a bit too light. Let's do that a bit. Let's do that again. And what you can see with your roll, if your roll's perpendicular, like you can see there, it's kicked off slightly to at the bottom, which basically says that tool's slightly below centre height. So. Um, and for a parting off tool like this at the front needs to be slightly above centre height if anything, only very very slightly. So we'll just bring that up a tiny bit, which is harder to do without the um, without the uh, the stopping, but uh, that's about bang on centre height now. If anything, it's probably still a bit too too low. Let's bring it up a bit more. I made that mistake before. So yeah, that's probably slightly above now, which is uh, about where it needs to be. Okay, let's make sure everything's tight. We need to square this uh, this tool off with the with the chuck which we'll just do on the face of the jaws right that's as tight as it's going to get line up with the mark where we are there I'll find my oil and uh, we'll give this a go and see if it see if it wants to play. I think that's case hardened. By the way, that's just touched that. I thought it did look hard. I'll tell you what I didn't do. I didn't lock my uh, I didn't lock my carriage off. Well, let's do that. Just stop any movement. Let's give that another go. does not want to cut. Right, so there we go guys. Um, all of that issue was this rigidity, this parting off rigidity, this... I don't know what, there's something in this lathe. It turns okay, but when it comes to parting off, it just does not want to part off. And I, I think it's this flat surface here, but it, it does need a good strip down. And what I might even do, I've seen some of the other channels where they've taken the compound off completely and just put a, a nice solid tool post straight onto the straight onto the cross slide which is what I may end up doing because I think that's going to be far more rigid it's you know spindle bearing wise the lay is very good um, the spindle bearings are good everything else is fairly rigid I just think the weak point is here even though this is ground I don't know whether they've made some attempt at case hardening it the, 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 the surface was does seem, you know, it's not hard hard, the file goes through it and I've just gone through that in two or three minutes with a hacksaw so it's not, you know, it's not hard hard, it cut okay with a hacksaw so um, there may be an element of case hardening that they've done on the outside, I don't know. Anyway, so long story short, I, I, you know, I've always known that parting off, I've never successfully parted anything off other than very soft materials with high speed steel tools on this lathe. Um, so it's something that does need a, a bit of attention. I did try another off camera. I did try another tool. It's the same as the other one, but it's a uh, uh, it's the opposite hand groover. Um, so 
with a brand new insert in and it, that didn't want to look at it either. I tried various different speeds and it just it just chattered and vibrated and was trying to dig in underneath. So you can see when it digs in, you can see this whole unit here moves on the on the on the compound. So there's something inherently wrong here, which is why I can't part off. So um, anyway, all of that out of the way. When we've now got we've now got the excess length cut off there. So the next job is we'll rechuck that back in, get a normal turning tool in, which should be okay. We'll turn the diameter down to 10 millimeters for the thread, and uh, and then we'll look out some uh, a die for, for putting the 10 mil thread on. I'll bring you back when we've got that set up. Alright guys, I've got a standard turning tool in there now, so we'll face that off and start turning the OD down for, for the 10 mil thread. And uh, this will confirm whether the outside skin is hard or not when I turn the diameter. Um, I don't know whether the parting tool had broken through the hard stuff and the hacksaw was cutting through the softest stuff in the middle. Could have been, but we'll find out in a minute. certainly heard it. The colour of the chip right at the outside as I was facing there came off blue and then instantly it, it, it came off sort of normal steel colour so that's definitely been case hardened which that plus the instability of this would be the reason I was struggling with the part off tool. Okay we'll carry on and turn the diameter down. there that's definitely hard case hardened I think Let's see what diameter we're at 13 and a half Right, I'll just go and fetch my um, 
look at my die, the 10 by 1.5 die, and I'll uh, I'll bring you back when we've got that set up. Okay, we've got a, an M10 die. I'm not sure of its pedigree. It's in a Clark uh, set that I bought from a, a car boot sale, so it looks fairly crisp inside there, but uh, I can't imagine it's fantastic quality, and this is quite hard, as you've just seen from the turning, but we'll give it a go. Put some lube on, give it a, give it a fighting chance. Bring the tail stuff up. This is another tip by the way guys, spanner on the chuck jaw, um, not the best spanner I know, but uh, spanner on the chuck jaw, when you're doing this don't be tempted to uh, use the chuck key in the in the chuck because what you end up doing is splitting the, uh, the collar ring, but spanner on the, on the chuck jaw is perfectly, perfectly fine, you'll not do any damage like that. sounds and feels like it's cutting a thread. Put a, uh, let's put a decent set of threads on there. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Just try and zoom you in a bit. Whether that's showing up, but they're uh, very crisp. We'll just try the, uh, the end piece back on. Oh, it's perfect. that part of the modification done. Is that a bit of a clean up? So, uh, so that's that done. That's got the, uh, the the bar shortened now to the right length. I'll fit that back to the saw and then the next thing is to measure up uh, the distance from the, the frame to the underside of the casting uh, for the spacers. Now um, jury's out whether I'm going to use this bit of material or not based on how hard it is. Should be alright. I, I, I think the bolts are M8, so I need to get an 8mm hole through the middle of that. I don't think the case hardening is that deep. So uh, we'll give it a shot, but obviously I need to cut off the two lengths. I can't part them off 
as I've already demonstrated, so it's going to be a, either a hacksaw or a bandsaw job to get the, the, the rough lengths done, and then I'll be able to face them to lengthen the lathe. Should be able to use this, I guess. So I'll bring you back, I'll just get this put back on the saw, show you that, and, uh, and then we'll crack on with the spacers. Right, so there we go guys, that's got the, the shortened bar fitted back to the saw. Um, still got its full range of movement and at a very close position, you know, that, that's now level with the front of the saw unit, which means as I walk past, I'm there just before it was sticking out here. So I'm now no longer going to be catching that on my leg as I walk past the saw. So that's, uh, that's the first bit of modification done. Um, successfully, what I'm going to do now is just measure up the gap under here between the, the frame and the bottom of the casting for the spacers, front and back, and uh, and then we'll crack on with making the spacers. And I'll try and bring you in on the camera as I do the measurement just so that you can see what I'm dealing with. Okay, so there you go guys. I'm just going to use these, but I get yourself one of these if you have to do any kneeling down. It's a it's a gardening mat, but. Uh, I suffer from arthritis and conky joints, so every time I'm kneeling on a cold floor I just chuck that down and it uh, it saves the old knees. So we're just going to measure, so the problem we've got here, when you're bolting up from the frame into the bottom of the casting, obviously this frame's only, I don't know, three quarters of a mil thick, so if you, if you tighten that, you know, that, with any force, all you're going to do is distort this, this sheet metal work framework here, so all I did when I built the saw was just gave it a slight nip. So the plan now is to make two spacers. There's, there's one of these bolts at the front and one at the back, the same in the middle. So I'm just going to make two spacers that sit in between there and the, and the casting, which means I can tighten that right up then, nice and tight. It's nice and firm and rigid, it's not going to go anywhere, but it's also not going to distort the, the, the thin sheet metal work. So we'll just have a quick, uh, a quick measure, see what sort of distance we're talking about. Quarters. 25 and 3 quarters. 25 point 8. Is that close to the bolt with a 10? 25.5, so somewhere between 25 and a half, 25 point 8. And if I measure up the, the bolt diameter, so yeah, that's an 8mm bolt. So we need a clearance hole for 8mm through the middle and then probably 20. 26 mil uh, length will be fine because I have, you know, that will be distorted slightly with the with it, you know, very light nip I've already given it. So if I go for 26, I think that should be fine. I'll just double check the back one off camera and make sure they're both the same, um, and then we'll uh, we'll set about making a couple of spaces. There we go, guys. I've got the first one cutting off. saw that it's, uh, it's harder, harder material. at that end of the vice and that will just stop the vice tipping over so I've done that's the 25.8 this is the 24 one so this wants to be about 26 just to give me a couple of mil yeah, this isn't going to be particularly easy I've got enough to grip on here or not Yes, 26. Just give that a whirl.
Perfect. So another quick tip guys if you're ever doing anything like this where you've got multiple multiple uh, things that are at the same sort of bar stock, same size and you've only got one dimension or two dimensions that are different um, it's often easy to do this so you just draw yourself a quick table label up your dimensions that are going to be varying from part to part and then just give yourself a, a table rather than drawing two or three or four separate different things it's just a, an easy quick way of, uh, of, of keeping a track of the dimensions you need to be holding so that's the difference between front and back of the saw there so there's, there's you know there's, there's almost two mil difference okay I'll move the camera we'll get you set back up at the lathe we'll face both these off to length and then we'll stick a um, an, eight, an eight mil clearance hole through the middle and uh, and then we'll fasten them to the saw and that'll be the end of the job okay we'll do the shortest one first which is uh, 24 mil24 24.07 I think for what it's doing that will be close enough so that's the first one done I'll um, I'll do the second one off camera the same and then I'll just film film us uh, fitting later on to the bandsaw well there you go guys there's the two uh, two spaces finished oh, you know, finished off with a, with a clearance hole for 8mm through the middle um, there's a long and a short, long ones for the front, short ones for the back. So I'll just uh, I'll just fit the uh, the front one on camera, and I'll fit the back one off camera.
So there you go, Cormac. That's how you can improve your uh, improve your saw for for free, or well, certainly for free in terms of access material. So uh, that's the space is done. Vice done. Happy with that. That's uh, that's a, a decent modification. I'll uh, I'll fit the back one off camera, and then I'll bring bring you back for a wrap up. Well, guys, there we go. Um, that's uh, the end of this episode. Um, it's, it's not been what you'd call exciting machining, but it's been machining, which is what the channel's about, and it's been about improving the workshop, and, and you know, that's that's all that it's about as well. So the saw's now much better um, in two respects. One is it's not uh, in the way anymore as I'm walking to and from, uh, and also it's now rigidly clamped to the base, so it's um, you know it's it's even sturdier than it was already. So I'm pleased with that. That's gone well. Um, it has highlighted, as I suspected it would, um, the issues I've got with the lathe, with the compound slides, with parting off. Um, you know, it didn't have everything in its favour. It was case hardened stuff, but but even so, um, it was clear that it was struggling. So um, I've got some work to do with that lathe. Like I say, I think I'm going to go for a take the compound slide off completely. Um, I'll still do the work to the compound slide when I get a milling machine and just flatten that surface off under the tool post so that I can still use the compound if I need to. Uh, but I think I'm going to go for a, a rigid tool post straight to the cross slide and that will just make life much much better. Um, and then also complement that, as I said earlier, with a, with a rear tool post uh, unit. Um, and then at that point the lathe should be uh, much more usable. So uh, that, I think that will do for today. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing and thanks to the new subscribers and uh, we'll catch you on the next episode.